Good evening. Hope you're doing well this evening. Uh, so what we're looking at tonight is the objective end of an old scope. This is an old center point. Uh, the reticle actually failed on this one. It was one of the old wire reticles uh, and it snapped. So I decided to donate this to science. So as I said, this is going to be the objective end, which uh, would face towards the target. Uh, opposite that, furthest from the camera, is the ocular. That's the lens that's closest to your eye. And a couple things that I thought would be of interest here. So if you look inside the scope body, you can actually see there's a small tube within the body of the scope. And that small tube contains lenses, but more importantly, it also contains the crosshair or reticle. If we were to move this up or down, we're actually moving the crosshairs, which changes your point of impact. So you can see these knobs, all they are is screws that are moving that back and forth. And at the bottom right corner here, right here, is a small spring that keeps that tube pushed up against these two screws. Now what limits the amount of adjustment I have is going to be how far that small tube inside the scope can move within the inner diameter of the scope body. So a smaller diameter scope tube is going to have less elevation adjustment to it, generally speaking, than a larger body scope. So for example, this center point is a one inch diameter scope tube. Had I gone up to a 30 millimeter body scope tube, I would have had more room for that small tube to move up and down, side to side, and as a result, I would have had more adjustment available to me. Now the other thing of interest is if I back this adjustment all the way out, either I do the elevation or the windage, I back them out, you'll see that now that tube has moved as far from the spring as it can. And one thing about springs is they prefer or operate best at the midpoint of their travel. That's where they're going to exert pretty consistent pressure against that small tube within the scope body. By backing this adjustment off, I've taken a lot of the preload off of that spring, and as a result, it's applying less pressure against that inner tube to keep it in contact with my adjustments. Now, what that means is each time I take a shot or this scope uh, goes through recoil, that small inner tube is going to move. And when it settles back in position, it's not necessarily going to settle in the same position after each shot, which means my reticle or crosshair is not going to be consistent. So as a result, it's a really good idea to maintain your adjustments as close to center as possible. <clears throat> now there's a couple ways of doing this. You know, you put, the, put a scope on an air gun, you crank in a whole bunch of elevation because you're hitting low. Well, an easy way to rectify that is by placing a small shim, plastic, a thin piece of metal, something like that, between the body of the, the scope and the bottom mount. Uh, bottom rear mount, excuse me. That'll actually angle the scope down and as a result that'll bring your shots up. The other thing that you can do is pick up either a one-piece scope mount or a rail that actually has an angle built into it and that will also bring your shots up without having to dial in too much elevation adjustment. So again, want to try and keep your adjustment in towards the center or at least away from the extremes. That way the pressure from that spring is consistent and again, you want to get more uh, elevation adjustment out of a scope, get one with a larger body. That gives you more room for that small tube to move up and down, or side to side for that matter, and therefore more range for your adjustment. Uh, anyhow, I hope you found this interesting. I thought it was kind of cool, thought I might share it with you. Again, hope you're doing well, and I will catch you later. Bye.